गणेश जी नमस्ते या या ओके आई सेंट आई सेंट द लिंक ऑलरेडी या थैंक यू
Uh, good evening, students. Is it I'm audible? Anyone? Is it I'm audible? Yes, sir. Loud and clear. Thank you. Okay. So just I want to start with the introduction. Okay. Uh, everyone, actually, like all the students, I request you to change your rename your uh, uh, so that you know whatever the registered uh, names you can register registered so that you know we can understand actually like you know who is attending who is not attending because uh, we are, i am very strict on uh, your assignments and attendance so don't request every time actually for the recorded uh, videos we will provide it but you know better actually you understand and you ask questions so that you know you will have clarity on what you are trying to do okay okay uh, Okay, so I am from uh, Silicon Microsystems, and uh, we are into electronics equipment design and manufacturing. Uh, so, uh, Okay, so Silicon Microsystem, we born in 1998. We are into design and manufacturing and marketing some of the electronics product and as well as uh, some of the EDA tools. So we are uh, more of focused on education sector and research sector. Uh, so we have products uh, in the field of VLSI, embedded communication, automation, and robotics. Uh, rich experience in product development and uh, marketing. Okay, uh, we all, always you know, work between industry and institutions, conducting a lot of seminar, workshop, conferences to train the trainers. In fact, uh, we started uh, our training center and uh, we, uh, we are trying to place them with the proper training program, I mean, uh, uh, higher end training program, which is, you know, most of the time actually it is a uh, skill based. Uh, it depends on the requirement from industry. We try to uh, we try to train their students and then uh, place them. Okay, these are the uh, programs actually what we do in at our institute like uh, VLSI, Antenna Design and Simulation, and then uh, we have uh, embedded uh, system development, industrial automation. Uh, industrial automation again, it is more of a PLC based automation with the SCADA and PCP design and robotic uh, prototyping. Usually, most of the time, actually, you're aware uh, uh, robotics means, uh, see, uh, what you do at your project, college students project, you know, that is what we call as a research projects, research uh, uh, robots, where you go to the market, you buy a lot of controllers and motors and the wheels, sensors and all those things. Okay, and the other one, actually, what industry robots, okay, it is of more of a six axis robot or a scalar robots, Okay, uh, it is uh, used in industry applications. In between, there is a one more type of robot, which is a more of a prototyping of robot. In between these two, it will come. So we get a lot of controllers and sensors, timer, I mean, then a uh, lot of mechanical components uh, uh, we all design. So using these, actually, we start training the students. Okay, so then we have uh, AI, machine learning, and the product design and development. Usually the students, you know, uh, they work on, see, they understand a lot of uh, subjects, you know, uh, from first semester to eighth semester, but finally they'll never uh, uh, you know, bridge between these subjects, you know, whatever they study from first semester to eighth semester. Like you have uh, communication, advanced communication, then RF, then we have uh, microprocessor, microcontroller, then we have uh, uh, VLSI, advanced VLSI, embedded on H051, then AVR, MSP430, ARM7, 
cortex m3 there are a lot of controllers right so but finally students will never uh, you know collide everything and then try to do some projects see they finally you know what they do actually okay but better actually you map it everything and then you go on that so and today's uh, speaker i want to introduce a uh, wonderful person okay see this is um, engineer by heart uh, with a passion of bringing education reform and future generation after working few years found uh, na2 design with uh, distribution and uh, design profile have developed many vls and embedded products and completed uh, many drdo projects too, uh, with versatile skills always been uh, inclined towards upliftment of uh, engineering education and have conducted uh, numerous workshops seminar and faculty development programs towards it been member of industry inter interaction department in few engineering colleges and still working towards making difference in industry and education uh mr vinay sharma is a trainer okay and uh, passionate about the product development completed his engineering and mtech from uh, college of engineering pune and pg diploma in vlsi technology so in and out vlsi and also see nai logic private limited pune is also uh, one of the developer part uh, part of uh, development team for uh, microwind tool so he is a technical director in that okay so he is in he knows uh, what is a tool uh, uh, you know from where it can be used strong experience in project and team management have handled multiple level of projects with uh, a team size of from 2 to 120 uh, well familiar with the technology like vlsi instrumentation processor iot communication dsp and specialization in microelectronics and conducted various training programs important training to the students and professionals technically strong with high grasping power for new technologies strong communication presentation and interpersonal skills i think everything in one person okay and uh, worked extensively uh, for for the fpj platform and uh, you know see usually when you talk about in you know, education vlsi means you know you, you, most of the students you know if you ask actually uh, which tool you work they say actually only xilinx or you know they talk about cadence but they are not fully aware of because it is hardly you know you will get 2 to 3 months okay within that 2 3 months cadence is a very good tool but you will not get much time to work on that right okay uh, so usually you will never complete your uh, vlsi uh, design itself so that way actually the microwind is a beautiful uh, uh, you know educational tool okay it has starting from uh, entry level to the uh, uh, almost uh, designing and uh, uh, tapping out you can uh, do everything in that okay experience in languages like vhdl verilog we embedded c c python uh, okay so he is everything is learned and as i told actually is a product director of microwind lonely educational tool involved in development uh, team and uh, promoted and conducted several training programs on sima swlsa design in karnataka itself you know sim our vikram tool it is used in more than 75 colleges so even though they have a, uh, just for the sake of cadence or my, any other tool you know but most of the colleges they use our uh, microwind tool because of the easiness and the students will be able to uh, learn the whole process that is how actually so i want to uh, so this is how actually uh, this is what actually mr uh, vinay sharma's uh, uh, basic uh, brief introduction uh, so uh, we are into production we are into uh, robotics and also into training okay and this is a microwind tool uh, website so i uh, over to mr vinay sharma so before that you know uh, just i want to take uh, one more um, minute okay so i request um, everyone to introduce yourself okay you switch on your uh, video and as well as uh, audio and uh, just introduce yourself so that we'll know actually you are from which college and what you are studying okay thank you very much uh, can you start from mr pravin egde I'm a bit over ready. I like him, yar. Mr. Pravin, you there? Yes, sir. Ah, uh, can you speak? 
Bhavin and from Saranwati College, sir. Which college? Hello. I am not able to Saran hear. Saran Vishesh, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, Saranwati. Okay. Which semester you are in? M V A T. Which semester? Seventh semester. E C. Seventh semester. Okay, great. Seven. Okay. Where are you now today? You are in Bangalore. No, sir. Where are you now? Oh, no. I think some disturbance. Okay. See, uh, I request everyone to change your name, rename uh, with whatever the name you registered with us, so that uh, we'll know who is what. Okay. Second one is Ramya C. Ramya C, can you introduce yourself? Yes, sir. Yeah. Good evening, sir. I'm Ramya. I'm from the MBIT College. Okay, which semester? Studying in seventh sem sem seventh semester. Okay, right now you are in which which place? I'm in Bangalore, sir. Bangalore, great. Okay, so why you joined BLSI? So, uh, since I'm an AC student, I think uh, doing an internship with uh, BLSI would be nice, and it will be helpful for our lab as well. Okay, see one more thing I want to uh, give you information. See seventh semester you have as per VTU syllabus the VLSI lab, right? Yeah. See this semester definitely you are going to miss it because the college is not going to do any of the practicals. Yeah. Okay, so this is good that actually you joined here. So you can cover all your uh, VTU as per the syllabus. Okay, and also uh, Mr. Vinay is going to give uh, uh, like uh, some assignment which is going to be of uh, industrial uh, uh, exposure. Okay, and also your project. So better actually you uh, concentrate. It can be on your internship and also your lab and also your can be are going to be a project also. So all three one actually you can complete it. Thank okay, you. thank you, Ramya. Thank you. Uh, I can see there is a rough feel. Rough feel. Rough feel. Good evening. You... Good evening, sir. I'm uh, Rafael Rosario. Oh, sorry, sorry. Okay, Rafael. Okay. Or uh, Rafael also, you can okay, pronounce Rafael. it however you want to. But, oh, yeah. it's a good name actually, Rafael. <laughs> okay. Yes, yeah. 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 And I'm uh, from uh, Sir M Vishweshwaraya Institute of Technology. Okay. Uh, which semester? Uh, sixth semester. Sixth? Sixth? Okay. Yeah, it's like it's almost done now. Okay. Great. They promoted us. Okay, okay. So now you are in seventh, in fact. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Welcome, Ji. Anusha. Can you unmute yourself? Yeah, Anusha. Uh, can you unmute yourself and uh, introduce yourself? Your audio is not clear. Anusha, you are unmute, unmute. Press your mic. Okay, you try once again. Okay, we'll go to uh, Rohan Reddy. Hi, Rohan. Yeah, your audio is not clear. No, it's not coming. Working, so I just go without them. Yeah. Good afternoon, yeah. sir. My name is Rohan. I am from Sir M. Vishweshwar Institute of Technology. I'm studying in my seventh semester. I got promoted recently. And I'm the fair. Okay. Okay, thank you, Rohan. Yeah, thank you, sir. Uh, Swami HP. Yes, sir. Myself, yeah. myself, Swami HP. I am from Down here, studying in Aveli Government Engineering College, Aveli. Okay, nice man. Okay, thank you. Okay. Anusha, can you come back? Okay, I think still not clear. Uh, Danush. Good evening, sir. Good evening. 
I'm Dhanush. I'm Dhanush and I'm coming from Saram VIT, sir. Saram VIT, okay. Saman Samsha is Eastwood. From Saram VIT. Yeah. Yes, okay. yes, sir. Thank you, Dhanush. Yes, sir. Uh, Nihal Pai. Nihal Pai. Okay. Uh, Vinktesh A. Mr. Vinktesh. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Sir, I'm Vinktesh A. Nayak from BMSIT, sir. 7th MEC. BNMIT, sir? BMSIT, sir. BMSIT, okay, fine. Okay, thank you. Uh, Nishit. Nishit Shastri? Yes, sir. Hello. Can you introduce? Uh, I'm from RNSIT, sir. I'm in fifth sem now. Fifth semester, okay. So one semester earlier itself, you know, you want to learn. Okay, that's great. Uh, are you aware of a little bit on VLSI? Uh, no, sir. Uh, we have Verilog from fifth sem, so. Okay. Okay, fine. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Prithvi. Good evening, sir. It's Ms. Prithvi. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> go ahead. Okay. Yeah, I'm from Saram VIP and I'm doing 7th sem. 7th sem. Okay, thank you. Uh, Jayant Bharadwaj. Hello. Yeah. Yeah, I'm Jayant. I'm from RNSIT, 5th sem AC student. Okay, thank you. Uh, Likit. Hello. Yeah, Likit. Uh, it's uh, Likit Shrikar, sir. I'm from BMS, BMSC, sir. Okay. Sir, okay, thank you. Um, Akshata. Uh, hello, sir. Yeah. Uh, I'm Akshata Vimurthy from PS University. I'm 2019 MTech graduate in VLSI. Uh, sorry, can you introduce once again? Uh, Akshata Vimurthy from PS University. Okay. Uh, I'm MTech gra graduate in VLSI, 2019 pass out. Oh, great, great. Okay. Uh, Pooja? Hi, sir. This is Pooja. Yeah. Uh, I'm from Sorembi IT. I just got promoted from my 6th sem. Okay. Going to my 7th. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, Yashaswini? Yeah, uh, I'm Yashaswini. I'm from Sorembi IT, 7th sem EC student. Okay, thank you, Yashaswini. Uh, Sahana? Sahana from Sorembi IT, 7th uh, sem EC. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Diveshri. Hello, sir. I'm Diveshri. I'm from yeah. Government Engineering College, Kerpet. Kerpet, okay. okay. Thank you, Diveshri. So you are at Kerpet right now? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, Shankarshan. Hello, sir. I'm Sankarshan. I'm from uh, Sir MBIT, 7th sem. Okay, thank you. Rakshit? Hello, sir. I'm Rakshit Jeffy from Gordon College. Uh, your audio is not clear. You are from which college? Government Engineering College, Care Pattern. Care Pattern, thank you. Uh, infant Nuhan, Nutan? Hello, sir. I'm Infan Nutan, Akshay Institute of Technology, Tumpur, 7th sem EC. Okay, thank you. Uh, Vanita? Vanita from Government Engineering College, Haveri. Haveri, okay. Anusha, can you speak now again? Hmm. Okay. Uh, 
So who is missing now? Can you inter- Niranjan? Hi sir, this is Nihal. I'm from Sir MBIT 7 CMC. Okay, thank you. Next. Hi sir, this is Niranjan. Yeah. I am from Sir MBIT 7 CMC sir. Great, thanks man. Anybody okay, else? Thank- Hi, sir. I am Archana from Government Engineering College, Haveri, 7th sem EC student. Thank you, Archana. Thank you, sir. Hi, sir. Good evening. Good evening. How are you, sir? Fine. How are you, ma? I am good, Thanks. sir. Yeah. I am Sachin Grove from Government Engineering College, Haveri, sir, in 7th sem, sir. EC. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you sir. Anybody else? I think the Gautami. I think two people could not speak, Archana and I think Gautami. Okay. One or the other way, uh, other day actually we'll definitely will speak to you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, over to Mr. Vinay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. It was good to see all of you coming together for this VLA side course. And uh, I'm looking forward for another session with the students. And uh, I hope all of you enjoy this course. Obviously, it's not a fun course that I will make you fun and laugh. It's not a stand-up course, definitely. But uh, the point is that, yes, I will try to make uh, whatever the information I have and the experience I have to share with you on the subject. So more of this course is designed to make sure that you guys are getting a good exposure on the hands-on experience of the design. Okay. So we have kept this entire workshop in such a manner that there would be less of theory and more of hands-on. So probably for the first couple of days, you will see a little bit of lecture because that will be only about uh, the subject knowledge and to bring you guys on the same platform and the same page of the requirement of the subject and some questionnaires about the subject. And later on, we will just switch to assignments. So on the daily basis, we will just take experiments. Uh, on the daily basis, we will do some classwork. I will give you some homeworks to do at, uh, at your workplace so that you get a better hands-on. And at the same time, you get a deeper understanding and knowledge of the subject. Okay. So let me start uh, sharing my screen. Okay. Okay. So I would be putting some questions forward. If you guys also have some doubts, questions, any point of time, uh, you can definitely raise uh, your doubts. And uh, we will try to make it more interactive. Okay. So first of all, let me uh, clarify that I'm audible and uh, my visibility is not that important. Okay. Uh, As of today, the audio is more important. So I believe I'm clear and loud enough for all of you. Yeah, clear. Okay. All the students are also comfortable on that, right? Okay. Okay. So I have just made a presentation that is a little bit uh, of informative. It is just talk generic and uh, it answers a few questions which are generally relevant to students during the learning phase that why we learn this subject and what, uh, why do we uh, check about power consumption, why it is so important, how the timings are calculated and uh, why timing issues are so important these days. And a uh, little bit of technology flow charts and the technology trends which have progressed in the past few decades. So it is just to give you some informative about the industry, the way it has moved from the past uh, few decades and uh, the scenario it is in today's manner. So more or less, uh, we are using these days CMOS technology for the fabrication of transistor, right? So most of the time the question comes up that why it is always has been CMOS? Because when you study engineering, you have seen many other transistor families, right? From ECL, TTL, CMOS, bipolar, polar. Yeah, many so many flavors of ice creams are available so it is why that only the mango we like the most okay so definitely that question pops up although the technology has helped us to get so many feature rich products today we are using that is really astonishing because 
we have a mobile phone in our hand, which is as powerful as a computer of uh, five years back, right? And the kind of computers we are using today, they were as good as a supercomputer 20 years back. So the kind of computing power we have in our own hands, that is really amazing to use. And definitely this, uh, the feature rich our life will keep on increasing. In the coming times, we will have something much more amazing to use in our daily life. And all this is possible because of CMOS technology. Look at the web products like you use these days, like Alexa. I mean, these are the gadgets which you place in your home and they can recognize your voice, they can recognize your tone, they can recognize your question patterns, everything is processing, okay? And that requires semiconductor to do that. So beautiful it is. So <clears throat> the question is definitely like this, that why it is always CMOS, that why from past so many decades, we have been using uh, CMOS. Why it is that uh, the scientists didn't came with any other technology which was better than CMOS or something uh, easier than CMOS, right? So generally, yes, if you look around the benefits of CMOS, you will come across all these ones, right? Uh, I believe everyone is familiar with CMOS technology. What is CMOS transistor and how do they function, especially the enhancement mode? Uh, can I get some couple of yes or no's through audio or through chat, anything you like? I believe everyone has studied CMOS transistor, they're functioning. Uh, they have voltage operator device, you give a voltage, they turn on, they turn off, they are in Aspen mode. So the, the, the magnetic carriers, they pull up, they form a channel and the current from the train to source starts flowing or source to train starts flowing. They have studied all that. Thank you, Nihal. Anyone else would like to put a comment, yes or no onto it? Great, great. Okay, thank you. So uh, if you have studied all uh, the functioning of CMOS, you must have also studied about the benefits of CMOS, right? So I believe these are the benefits you look around, right? Uh, they are low power, they are scalable to the Lambda rules. Scalability means like, you, know, you understand scalability. Scalability is something uh, which you can scale, that's it. Something which you can scale is scalability. So simple and engineering answer. So uh, scalability means like resizing of any dimension, dimensions of an object, okay? Uh, okay, with some defined rules. And when you resize the dimensions of an object, the properties or the features are also sized according to it, okay? They are also sized according to it. For example, if I have a flat, okay? or a room in which uh, a, a six feet human can live very well, I resize to 50%, then it can be resized, I mean, a dwarf can live into it, okay? So a human dwarf can live into, into it. So the area becomes sized, the volume becomes sized, everything proportionate in the same manner. So that is scalability, okay? The possibility of resizing is scalability, okay? Then, uh, CMOS are having very high level of integration. So by high level of integration, we understand that uh, if you have been given an area, so how many number of transistors you can fit in. So if you take a CMOS, you can fit more number of transistors as compared to any other technology possible because they are rectangle in size, okay? Whereas other are not in rectangle, they are either oval or some elliptical, uh, elliptical or circular in size. So that's why it, they will not cover the 100% area. Uh, the CMOS is also a high performing device. Uh, it's not the highest, remember, it's a high performing. It, it, it is not uh, the best of the best. Okay? It is one of the best. Then they can restore the logic level and uh, rise and fall times are of the same order. Uh, when you say rise and fall time, that means the time taken to from go low to high and high to low is fall. So generally what happens when you're using any transistor technology, for rise, you use a separate transistor, and for fall, you use a separate transistor. So what happens that uh, most of the transistor technology, they give a different rise and fall time, okay? Because of the properties. Whereas CMOS, they have nearly of the same order, okay? 
but still the question remains there itself that uh, why we are using so much of CMOS? Why, what, what was the property of the CMOS which is so apparently uh, important that every fabricator is using a CMOS technology for making of the devices, okay? So what do you guys say? Which one do you think is one of the most important role in this case of the CMOS? You understood that why, why it was so much popular, why? Any ideas? Anyone would like to make comment that, okay, I think because of the low power, because of this, because of high performance. High performance is so important, it's okay. Okay, we'll talk about it. Uh, anyone else would like to make a comment that okay, this, this particular reason I think is behind the popularity of CMOS transfer? Anyone? High level of integration, okay. Just four more, you can select high noise immunity. Noise, noise immunity. How the noise can become so important for past 40 years, for low power, okay. Okay, low power, one guy thinks that low power is also important, okay. Anyone else? Minimum line width, small size. What do you mean by minimum line width? <clears throat> well, I'm not sure what it is that small size. Okay. High density or logic function on headset. Well, 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 okay. Fabrication advantage, yes, that can be one reason, but you have answered in a little bit cryptic manner. Uh, it is not, okay. Well, I tell you maybe a background story with it. Okay, uh, low static power consumption, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, you guys are familiar with automobile companies and their brands. You must be familiar. You must have seen a lot of cars on the road. We are not living in a stone age that we have not seen a car in our life. Yes. So you must see many cars. So let's pick up any car a company and their models and ranges. For example, Maruti, which is one of the most popular companies in the country today. And you pick up their car series, anyone like... Uh, Alto and uh, Wagenar and something like more, okay? So what do you see in them common, okay? The structure is different, yeah? They are all automobiles. So common thing is the engine. The companies, they don't redesign the car engine again and again. Do you think that for every car model, they redesign the entire engine? I don't think so, right? And I believe all of you will agree on that that none of the car companies, if they make a series of car, for example, Mahindra, they take a, make a Scorpio or the high-end XUV series of the car ranges. So they have made a car engine for XUV series, I mean, SUV series of car models they have. So let it be Scorpio or Scorpio, some other model, Bolero, or maybe XUV 500, or maybe another car series, which are of that higher segment, okay? They will have the same, same engine, right? They don't design the entire engine for all of them. No, because that will be very tedious and time consuming. It is not tedious for them. They are experts. They can make it, they can design it, but it is illogical to redesign the same stuff again and again, right? It is not logical. Someone, why will someone will do that? You need to just change the chassis, depending on the passenger requirement, depending on the terrain they are going to be and the looks and appearance because that's how the crazy we are about okay so so basically they are reusing the same engine again and again keeping in mind that the engine was good 
keeping in mind the engine was good that it is economical it is uh, it is having a high torque it, it can deliver a lot of power it is high speed engine right and it is low maintenance engine so obviously the basic criteria are the same okay the basic benefits has to be there but the reuse makes it popular that engine design was such a manner that you can reuse the engine again and again that made it popular among the automobile manufacturer the same logic comes to the cmos technology also okay you must have seen intel series of processor right uh, when they say that it's core i7 processor 10th generation you know if you these days if you go to buy a laptop uh, the the car, the laptop seller they always push you like this sir this is core i5 or i7 10th generation this is the latest processor and this is the most powerful low power and very good okay so what do you make of it that intel has redesigned the entire core i7 from scratch did they what do you think no the answer is no they have not redesigned the entire product from the scratch no if we go two years back okay it was core i7 ninth generation you know 2019 ninth generation processor so does that mean in within a one year they have designed the entire processor from scratch and released in within a one year i don't think so okay because you understand designing and sending it to chip is a very 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 time consuming and uh, complex procedure and you cannot accomplish that in this one year of time frame so this is possible just because of cmos they are scalable with the design work. so what is the idea behind that i have a cmos transfer which is let's say a one by one size i just reduce the size by 50 percent and i get everything benefit of 50 percent my 50 percent area is reduced the power comes down the speed goes up everything becomes better okay so i have to not to redesign from scratch my same logic same schematic same logic will work perfectly without any issues even the layouts will work without any issues if i just redesign and fabricate with the latest technology available so that's why the scalability factor of cmos technology has kept them favorites among the designers for the past 40 years okay definitely they are other merits of cmos that they are low power they have a high level of integration they are high performing okay the rest all things are good low static power consumption yes these are all good but the scalability scalability of the cmos is the highest attraction between the designers so that's why they kept on going from past so many times okay so this is how it is like uh, i just collected some slide and made some figures that this is how the technology has progressed so earlier uh, like for example few years back we were using 130 nanometer that is 0.13 micrometer technology then 90 65 these days we are using 14 and 10 nanometer products and even the 7 nanometer are, are also released in the market that's what i just see i mean past couple of months back they have started releasing so now you have processors which are fabricated using uh, 7 nanometer of CMOS technology, in fact, FinFET technology. So that's amazing. That's amazing. Okay. So the current values have came down. Okay. And uh, the static power consumption is also very low. Okay. And earlier we were using a CMOS technology, but these days we are using FinFET for fabrication technology. This is a slight change in the construction of MOSFET. I will try to cover that definitely. I believe everyone is familiar with what do you understand by 130 nanometer, 90 nanometer, what that figure is. Can a couple of persons can answer me? I mean, like with the yes and no, we'll do a simple yes and no. You guys familiar with when I say 130 nanometer, 90 nanometer, what do you understand by that? Yes, no, anyone? 
Am I audible? Uh, hi everyone. Like uh, the size of each transistor. Okay. Anyone else? Nihal. Thank you. Anyone else would like to make a comment on it? That sir, ये बहुत basic है हमको अच्छे से मालूम है. We know this very well. Please proceed. Someone would like to answer in that format also. You know it well again. When I say ninety nanometer is the size of the transistor, what do you mean by that? Perfect. Okay. Anyone else? Anyone who's not familiar with it, in case he's confused, they can just put a question mark, send me in private message. Maybe I will cover it. In or otherwise, you can let me know that no, sir. This is we are familiar with, and you are wasting our time. Kindly proceed. Okay. So I assume that everyone is familiar that when you say one thirty nanometer, ninety nanometer, it is a distance between source and drain. That's perfectly answer when it is. It's a distance between source and drain, and this is commonly known as the length of the transistor. Okay. Generally, we never talk about the width of the transistor. It is the length of the transistor that always matter. Okay, this is how the technology is being addressed. So, whenever anyone says that that my technology on which I'm working on is let's say thirty two nanometer, so that means that the distance between drain and source is thirty two nanometer, and all the parameters are associated with that. Okay, <clears throat> why we don't about uh, width? Why it is only the length? This is also called the length of the transistor. We never talk about width. It's only the length that we talk about. <clears throat> so, if we continue looking at the the technology trend, the scale down. So this is how we have progressed. I mean, from in early nineties, we were at point three five, then point two five, point one eight, point one three. That is one thirty nanometer. Then we enter into deep submicron. I mean, submicron technology that is ninety, sixty-five, forty-five. Then after that, we at we enter into deep submicron that is thirty-two, twenty-two, eighteen. So this is how the technology has progressed from past uh, few decades. Okay, and with every uh, switching of technology from one length to another length, okay, there has been definitely some improvement. Okay. So generally, two x is definitely the improvement density, and obviously there is improvement in switching speed, and the transfer switching time, and even the leakage current. Okay, so generally thirty percent is expected uh, improvement in the switching power and the speed of it. Okay, and uh, anyone familiar with Moore's law? I believe everyone is familiar with Moore's law, right? So, how does the Moore's law apply in the real life? I mean, not real life in our life. I mean, the CMOS technology scaling. And uh, let's talk about it. Okay, uh, I, I believe everyone is familiar with Moore's law. What he said uh, about uh, uh, the number of transistors will what will happen? Double or three times? What 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 will happen? What Mr. Mu said about number of transistors? Yeah, the number of transistors will double after every uh, 1.8 years. That is one and a half years, right? Okay. So, uh, why he made that comment? I mean, like, why, why, and how he came to that figures? Well, the real story is quite difficult to say about. But what I have observed is that statement has been uh, held true for a long time, for a long, long time, more than forty years. Okay, and uh, I think I just take hold on, just so I have to share it again. I believe you are seeing my screen, right? Okay. 
So when when you say this, for example, any technology switching they are doing, right? So the Moore's law, he said the number of transistors will double after every one and a half years. Okay. So how he made that prediction? How he came to that? Isn't it? So that is very interesting though. Okay. So, okay, maybe I just use this whiteboard. So he must just made a simple discovery that let's say I have a square which is of let's say let's forget the unit it's only one by one okay so what is the area of the square it's one square unit okay now if i reduce the size of this square by 0.7 okay so now it is 0.7 by 0.7 so the new area is what so what happens like 50 percent area advantage you get. So this is what the Moore's law has been doing from past so many years. I believe you are seeing this chart. I mean like I just made a drawing of the Moore's law. So simple mathematics. So a 30% reduction in size, this is what you will get it. Okay. So let's say any technology, for example you take 90 nanometer. Okay. So when you say 30% of 90 nanometers, how much? So you just say 90 into 0.7. That will be what? Okay, 0.63 around. So it will be 65, close to 65 nanometer. So you multiply 65 by 0.7, what do you get? 45 nanometer. Okay. You multiply 45 nanometer by 0.7 that is you lose the 30 percent you get 32 nanometer right and so on and even prior to 90 nanometer let's say it was 0 0.12 micrometer okay into 0.7 okay so that will bring to 90 nanometer only so it will be 84 or close to 90 nanometer so this is how the technology has been progressing from the past so many time. Okay. I'll just share back my slides again. I'll just share back with you. Okay. So, so that's what you see that this has been doing that way. Uh, any doubt questions over here? You can come quickly on the audio and then we can quickly have a chat and discuss the matter instead of typing long way. I believe I'm audible and my pace is good. I mean, I'm not too fast in my volume or audio or the speed of my producing words. Let me know if you, if you feel that my voice quality or something is going up and down so that I keep a note of that. Why 30%? Okay, that's one question. Good. Okay, anyone else would like to put any question forward? Nihal has asked me a question that why 30%? Okay. Okay, Nihal, uh, for if you ask this question that why 30%, then I answer in a very simple manner, first of all. Okay. Uh, that is, let me have a whiteboard. Is it possible to have a whiteboard? Okay, here. So the question is why 30%? Okay, so simply, Nihal, that is because uh, Moore law, I mean, Moore said. Not more long. He said they'll double every one and a half years. So it was Intel who was doing it. I mean, 
the responsibility was not on the shoulders of the intel but it was like the intel took the challenge right they took the challenge for that long time so the logic was very simple you reduce the size of the transfer by 30 percent and you get area advantage of 50 percent and hence that will bring twice the area and you can fit double the number of transfers logic comes simply that way okay so that that's what we did in a small math that's what we did in the small math that uh, you take any square let's say one by one is the size of it so the area you get one square unit okay now if you reduce 30 percent size you get a new square of 0 0.7 by 0 0.7 so the area is 0.49 so you get twice the area advantage twice the area benefit and that's what you need for example 1 million transfers fit into one square millimeter okay right so if i reduce the size of the transfer by 30 percent how many transfers i can fit in the new area i mean in the same area one million square millimeter it will be twice the density i mean number of transfers will become two million in that case is it clear okay so the number of transfers you can will get is 2x simple as that okay now let me ask one question the question is why not other percentage yes you asked but I mean, you, you should have continued the question uh, that why 30%, why not other percentage? If I say that my match is so uh, attractive, if one by one is the area is uh, sorry. Okay. One square unit. Okay. So if I reduce this by 50%. Okay. So what is the new area? 0.25 square unit. 75%. Wow. Area advantage. So if I reduce by 50% size, I get 75% area advantage. So it's like three times the number of transfers. I can be better than Moose, right? The <laughs> Moose is better than Moose. What do you say? Wait, I have to clear this. Okay, so uh, can I ask this? That anyone would like to comment on this? Why not fifty percent? Why not sixty percent? See, why thirty percent is okay. It is like you made a commitment. It is like you made a promise. You made a Moore's law. You know, in front of people, the Gordon Moore made a statement that number of transfers will double after every one and a half years, and people made fun of it he was laughed he was okay in those days there was no concern memes but definitely he was made fun of it many people wrote article that this is something absurd it's not possible because in those days the number of transfers on a silicon chip there were only in a few hundreds and a few maybe at the max thousands so people were not able to digest that if some thousand transfers are fabricating on that given silicon chip how it is possible that few years back down the line there will be hundreds of thousands of transfers on that silicon chip so people couldn't take it even they asked that mr gordon moon you want to say that this is how the amount of transfers will reach after a few years we said yes and everyone made a laugh of it okay so obviously intel took as a challenge they took it to their heart it was a kind of a matter of pride and uh, ego for them so they started researching and they started doing stuff and all of a sudden i mean the thing started coming to the place. You know, after every couple of years, they were able to release some technology in which the transfer size was scaled down by 30%. 
And with the simple math, they were able to continue doing this for so long. So after a few years, people stopped making fun of Intel. They started taking them seriously. So from past 40, year, 40 years, they have been doing this. And slowly, slowly, it has become a matter of pride for them. It is like, wow, if Intel say something, everyone takes it very seriously. When they said that they will make USB release and they, it will make a worldwide, worldwide phenomenon and it will be a next technology generation for the years to come, everyone took it very seriously. And whenever they released any new technology, everyone adopted very seriously. So that's why they hold a very strong position uh, in the semiconductor industry about research and re research, right? Yeah, the only question you can put forward is that, okay, we understood 30% was to keep their words alive, okay? Then why not they didn't try, or someone else tried better, that why not make it 50% reduction and number of transfers will be three times. I can become a, some more garden move, I can be garden more, something. So why not other percentages? That's a good question to ask. And you will not find an answer to those that question to any textbooks. Anyone would like to comment on that? I believe my question is quite clear. I went into quite details to explain that why we are not reducing the size of the transfer furthermore. Why not we are reducing 50%, 60%, 70%? 30% we understood that, okay, when I, I promise something and to get that promise, I have to minimum reduce by 30%. So that was kind of forced to do it. So this is the kind of formula I have to adapt. But why didn't someone went a little bit farther? Someone tried to outsmart Intel, something better. Why, why, why someone didn't do it? Okay. Mm. Let's put a little spin to the question. And I just hang around in another way to this inquisitive manner. If if, 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 if I say that, uh, okay. let's say I'm in, uh, I'm some, some very uh, filthy rich guy, I wish, okay, and uh, I wish to make a building for me, and I invite tender from the various construction companies in the city, and I get few tender, okay then probably there are two tenders or the quotations or the proposals I get down. And uh, the building size is 100 floors. I wish to make a 100 floor building for myself, you know, my private, private building for me, a personal house, just like maybe Antila. So I can name it Laltila, something. And uh, uh, the quotations I get is the first guy who says that he will make something, let's say, uh, the building for me in 500 crores okay and uh, i see his uh, professional background and i notice that he has constructed a lot of buildings of 80 floors 100 floors 90 floors buildings he has made it and uh, he looks quite professional and thorough in that okay so mostly he has made uh, 100 floors uh, 80 floors building okay the second guy the quotation which came was around 400 crores 100 crores less okay and uh, the number of buildings he has made is quite good numbers, the number of buildings, but the maximum height of the building he has handled was only 10 floors, okay? That was only 10 floors building maximum he has made all his life. Five floor, 10 floor, eight floor, like that buildings he has made. What do you suggest? To which, I'm a fam, like vendor or what do you call it, contractor, shall I give my order? The first guy, 500 crores, second guy, 400 crores. Which one? Okay, I think this is easier answer. I'm an easier question to answer. You can put forward your questions. How many your answers? I have 
I hope I was audible throughout my question and it, it, it was quite clear about that. No, yes. I hope. Okay. So Nihal says first person. Other others, what do you guys say? How about others? I hope I'm audible to all of you of the same level. Uh, okay, keep on for writing. You can just write one or two answer also instead of writing the entire first person or something like this. You can just write one or two. Thank you, Rafael. Uh, your name is really good here. These days you are in the limelight. Mm -hmm. Rafael, I believe the meaning is gust of wind. That's a good name. Gust of wind is a French uh, name as gust. A gust is like sudden burst of wind. So it means that someone is very powerful. Okay. Well, uh, yes, I will also place my order to the first guy because he looks experienced. Remember, because see, someone who's experienced of making 80 floors of building, obviously he will understand or he can handle all the problem related to 100 floors. He has to just go 20 floors up. So he will understand all the issues. His project management will be better. His understanding of resource handling would be better. He will have better skills to do the project. Okay, where the second guy, he doesn't understand even what problems he may face while reaching from 10 to 100. See, okay, then, okay, yeah, I can run for two kilometers daily. I run two kilometers daily. Someday if I ask you to run you know, 20%, 30% extra, you can easily run. No problem in that. You can always stretch down to 30%. And whatever the fatigue, etc., you can take it very easily. But someday if I ask you to from jump, run from two kilometers to 10 kilometers, probably you will exhaust and die on the road probably. And same is with the second guy. If I can start from 10 floor to directly 100 floors, I don't even know how to handle the, all that pressure, the load, the type of cement, the kind of soil analysis I have to do, the kind of wind uh, and the weather checking I have to do of the nearby area, just to make sure that if there are high wind coming, so how the building will be handling that high winds. So all that issues will be there. So the person will not understand. So 30% is a quite good margin to jump and address all the issues which will come in that 30% jump. Okay, so 30% is quite an honest figure to jump around. 50% and remember, it is not like that you cannot address that. Second vendor or the contractor, he's experienced in construction. Okay, now if I give him 100 floor, it is not like this that he cannot make an 100 floor building. He can, he can learn, he can understand, he can do a little research, he can do a study around and he can make the construction. But my point is, I am more, I'm Gordon Moore and I made a statement that the number of transfers will double in one and a half years, okay? So my project handling has to complete in one and a half years. I cannot extend beyond that. Okay. So it is like, yes, I have to make a hundred floor building, but within two years. Okay. So the first guy can do in two years because he know how to handle the issues properly, how to manage the project. Second guy, definitely he will delay my project and he will not do on time. It is not like that. He cannot do at all. No. Yes, he can do it. But he has to learn, he has to do research, he has to, you know, get uh, project management skills in handling those issues. And the first guy is already experienced. So whenever you jump 30%, all the problem related to 30% you can do in a given time frame. Beyond that, you will miss your project timelines, okay, which is very important for the Intel because they have to keep the promise. They have to keep the honor of the Moore's law. That's why. So that's why, you know, Moore's law was very fascinating for the industry experts for a long, long time, long, long time. Amazing. You know, someone's words came out and it was honored for the 40 years. Beautiful. I'm an amazingly done, amazingly done. 
Okay, let's continue further. So scaling always bring down benefits. Yes, whenever you scale down, you get better benefits. And with every technology, the benefits are there. All the benefits are same. That your device becomes smaller, it becomes faster, more number of features come into it, and it becomes cheaper also. Because in the same given area, now you can have two chips fabricated. So obviously the profit will double. You know, that's why the fabricators are uh, reducing the size of their chips day by day, year by year, because their profits are getting doubled, right? And the, your phones, smartphones are getting cheaper and cheaper. That's why, right? So this is how it is. Okay. This is a slide where we can talk, talk, and talk for a long time. <laughs> very interesting one. Very, very interesting one. Okay, very interesting. Because changing and scaling, yes, in simple manner, if we look at the slide, it looks simple. That in those days, then and now, then and now means that uh, 20 years back, maybe, at 20 years back, okay, uh, how, what, why the scaling was done, okay, and Today, why scaling is done? Okay, so it is then and now, before or after. Okay, comparative. So in those days, that is in nineties. Okay, the scaling was always done to, uh, you know, reduce the cost. Okay, so that's how it is. And uh, the same is true today also. Today also, the fabricator or the, any manufacturer or designer wants to scale down. Mostly, it is driven by the profits. Okay, it is just to cut down the cost so that the profits increases, okay? So the profits increases. Then in those days, scaling always drove the performance. In those days, it was like you just reduce the size of the transistor and the performance will go up, definitely. It'll come up. But today, we have shrunk the transistor so much small, so much small, that reducing further size of the transistor will not help you to get a better performing transistor. No, it is not true anymore. Now it is more of material uh, dependent. Okay, so today the kind of material you're using, they are driving the performance. Okay, so apart from scaling, it is also the materials which are keep on changing from the past uh, few uh, years. I would say, or in the last decade, they have changed a lot. Okay, then in those days, the uh, in nineties, the scaling or the was done because of the performance also, okay? That I want to speed up. Uh, you guys are quite young and uh, I would say that uh, you guys have not seen the war of uh, speed and the performance. In uh, late 90s, it was like, uh, uh, who will uh, break the barrier of one gigahertz processor? It was Intel, obviously the first, who came, I think with Pentium 3, uh, they launched uh, a first one gigahertz processor. So in those days, it was like that who will give more faster, high performing processor. In those days, someone said, oh, one gigahertz processor. Oh my God, so fast. Or someone said, oh, you're using 1.0 gigahertz. I'm using 1.1 gigahertz processor. You know, it's uh, $50 much more costlier than the one gigahertz processor. You can charge money in those days. So it was totally performance constraint in those days. But today, performance has changed its meanings. It has changed a lot. The way we are talking about performance has changed a lot. Today, it is more about power constraint. Today, we talk more, talk more of power because this is what we want, that I don't want my battery to go down uh, within a half of a day because uh, I see some of my friends uh, uh, who carry one very popular Chinese brand, uh, mobile phone it is not actually Chinese now. They don't claim it anyhow, but it's one of the most premier, premium flagship phone or, okay. And the point is in one hand, they carry the phone and in other hand, they carry the power bank. So it is always cabled attached. Okay. And I hope he's not in the office right now. <laughs> okay. Otherwise he will say that I'm making fun of him in the front of around 30 people. <laughs> Okay, so this is how it is. So today it is uh, power constraint. People want that. Yes, high performance is also required. Performance is like on the side part. Okay, people want better performing in terms of power. 
uh, in 90s, active power was more dominating. Active power means that when your device is operating, he's computing something or he's doing some tasks, then he, whatever the power he's consuming, that is called as active power. Okay. But today it is standby power. Standby power is that when my device is not working, when I'm not using my device, or when he's not doing any computation, then how much power he consumes? He's like in standby. Okay. It is like when the car is not running, the engine is on the standby, right? He's just doing a minimum power RPM and he's just holding the engine on for you so that whenever you come inside and you can just drive off immediately. Okay. So that is standby. So how much power the standby is, that is a matter of importance these days. Okay. Because no one wants that the phone I'm using, it, it, it dies within half a day. No one wants that. Okay. And that too, when I'm not using, for example, if I'm the class, I'm in the class, I'm teaching someone for an hour or two hours. I don't want my battery percentage to come down. Okay. Then in those days, it was independent design process. For example, that means that the designers, they never used to talk to fabricator guys. No, they were all different. The factory guys were different. The designers were different and they never talked to each other about the design process. But today it is collaborative design process. So it is about both manufacturing and the designing. They are hand to hand. So what kind of material they are using, the change of tuning of the materials, everything. The designer wants to check that. They want to tweak that and see the effect on the performance of the chip. So that's why it is more of collaborative design process these days. So the person who is a designer, he should also understand in a deep manner about the fabrication process and the materials used then only he can make a design which can meet the constraints. So I believe this is how we have came up. So in, the, in early days, I mean, a few years back, so we had like single core, then dual core. Now we have octa core processor these days, which is very common. So all this is because of the scaling. So in the same Gillian silicon area, you can see the number of cores have increased, okay? So in eight cores are there in the same space. So it is more faster and still consuming less power in with the same dual core processor. So that's amazing, that's amazing. So let's see around uh, one technology uh, transistor. Uh, let's, I have picked up a 32 nanometer technology because that was one of the first technology which uh, crossed a billion transistor, okay. So it was very successful uh, transistor uh, and it stayed for a long time, okay. So it works only on one volt power supply uh, one to 1.2 and the gate dielectric are not silicon dioxide. Now we are using hafnium oxide and silicon nitride for this. And the gate thickness is hardly in a nanometer range. So it's quite, quite complex transistor. And also it was one of the first transistor which uh, changed the way it looks in the textbook, okay? So it was also called a strained transistor. Uh, strained transistor means uh, someone who is uh, strained by English, uh, someone who's been applied a pressure on top of it, okay? So why strain? Now strain was because, it was because there's nothing, okay? Because, uh, okay. now what happened? This is what the figure comes up, you know, 30% issues, okay? This is our 30% issues. Now, when the Intel guys uh, reduced the size of the transistor by 30% and they came to 32 nanometer, they fabricated the transistor. And when they studied the performance, they found that the transistor is not performing at the level at which it should have been they were expecting an increase in the speed and they found that the transistor is not speeding up, okay? It is even slower than the previous technology. So they were not able to find out and later when they dug in deeper, they found the reason behind that. They found that, that the silicon atoms which are there in this barrier, now the, this barrier becomes has become so small, just 32 nanometer, because this is the distance, right? This is the distance which is 32 nanometer. This one, this is 32 nanometer, right? This distance between this. 
okay this is 32 nanometer okay so this has uh, became so small that this silicon atoms okay they have came so close they are so close that electrons cannot travel through the silicon atom because he strikes there so he comes down then he tries to move forward then he strikes him then probably he goes down he strikes him he comes up then he strikes over there he can't find a way then he comes up then he fights away then he goes straight so the silicons are not a silicon uh, sorry uh, because of silicon atoms the electron is not able to travel in a straight path no he cannot do that because he is hitting it is so congested that he do not find a straight way he may be going here there maybe here there like this right so he's going in a zigzag manner he cannot travel in a straight path so that is taking more time so what to do so what they did they put a mechanical cap on top of it they added another layer of silicon nitride okay on top of it okay and they created created a mechanical pressure across the source in dream region so when they a mechanical pressure was applied the silicon atoms spaced out okay they spaced out and the electron could travel more straighter as compared to the previous time okay so he was able to travel in more straighter path and the timings were met and it improved so this is how i mean <clears throat> 30 nanometer chains, many of the figures. And this is how it looks like now. So, and see, obviously, they must have, uh, you know, came across this roadblock. So it takes some time to think, understand, debug, analyze, and find a solution for it. So all in one and a half years, you don't have time for more than that, right? Otherwise, people will say, ooh, ooh you lost, right? People are very quick in answering that, okay? So this is strain technology. This is how the uh, real pictures look like. You can Google and see around. I just thought it might be someone who will ask that how do they look like. Okay. So that's what you see that this is that is a strain capping on top of it. So that is a stress cap layer across the drain and source. So these are drain and source across it. In case someone has any question or doubt anywhere that, okay, sir, please reverse this, reiterate this, you can talk. Okay. So, and supply voltage I also came down. Obviously, when I'm scaling down my transistor, I don't need higher voltage to turn it on or and off. So, this is very obvious that we are no longer working on 5 volt. In early 90s, it was 5 volt, then came 3.3, then 2.5, 1.8, 1.2, 1.0, now 0.8, and even lower, it'll go, it'll lower. So lower the voltage will keep on happening when you're scaling down because you don't require higher voltage to turn on and on off the device. It can work on the lower voltage also, simple as that. So with every technology scaling, we have been reducing down the power supply voltage also. And it's good, it's good. It's beneficial. Right. So, well, this is a very interesting slide to talk about. Uh, before that, may I ask someone, uh, all of you, that are you guys familiar with intellectual property course, IP? Are you guys familiar with intellectual property course? No? Okay. 
two no i will always stick to four or five if i get four or five yes or no then i will decide on that if i get five no's i will stop if i get more yes okay no problem no problem no problem, no problem. okay so intellectual property means a property which is intelligent intellect and that is a property of the core okay so that is intellectual property core okay in simple english in simple engineering answer i love that video i believe everyone must have seen that video the viva interview engineering viva interview video if not then probably maybe you can in your free time you can google and look for an engineering viva how they give okay jokes apart uh okay this is just a design trend uh, chart i thought somewhere it might be useful if someone would ask any question i can navigate to this slide and talk about it that how the industry is progressing from past although i have not covered all the trends i just covered two three highlights of it okay and i try to make a slide which can explain something in iterative manner see if we go back in 90s i am not probably before your birth i'm sure there must be some most of you are born after 90s so if we go back in early 90s so in those days what was there that number of transfers were not high in those days there were only few hundreds of thousand and maybe a couple of million not more than that okay and uh, but still and the number of transfers were escalating right now you are at that part of the chessboard uh, problem in which the figures will exponentially will shoot up in a vertical direction you remember the chessboard problem for example in the first chess square you are at 2 next square you are at 4 then 8 then 16 at 32 64 128 256 512 1000 2000 4000 000. so here you know till 10 15 squares you are not big they're too small they're too big so that's what happened till 90s the technology was so small and the number of transfers were just in millions but there were many people who foresighted that once you cross half the way of the chessboard the figures will be so complex very complex okay that you see at the figures like now you are at the 10th chessboard or maybe like okay then it's 1000 2000 4000 after 4000 it is 8000 now for example for 8000 number of transistors just for a figure if you take one year to design got the point any company team let's say you know there are n number of engineers working on a project and the transistor uh, numbers are only 8000 transistors and they take one whole damn year to design the product okay any product let's say and generally i'm not saying that one year has to be specifically log but let's say any num n number of months now 8000 after uh, this because of the moore's law number of transfers are doubling after one and a half years so after 8000 look at the chessboard issue it will be 16000 32000 64000 the figures are now going they were exponentially slow earlier now they are going vertically up okay so if for 8000 transistors if i'm taking one year for 60000 transistors how much am time i will take two years for 32000 transistors how much time i will take four years four years it might take by the same team to design the product right okay so that's the puzzle one okay that is the problem one let's catch it i will come to ip core don't worry i will come to ip core you know let's we'll join the puzzle jigsaw later so that is a problem one i believe you have understood the problem okay one okay the problem two is if someone has to redesign the product for example they have designed some project and after 2 3 years they find that something similar project came up and they have to reuse some part 
So do will they redesign entire thing from the scratch? Okay, right? Probably they will not like to, but they have to finally because they will be forced to do that. So that will be complicated. So that's an issue two. Issue three: What about validation of any you know project part they are designing it? For example, a project part has four or five parts together and joined it. And there is no validation of all the parts until unless I fabricate it. Okay. And there will be no guarantee that any of the parts will give work. And if any one failure is there, the entire design has to be circled down and it will be a zero. So that's problem three. Okay. So let's keep these problems aside and Maybe for an example, we take another problem. Okay, something very real life, something very heart touching to all of us, and something where it's very realistic to all of us. I believe everyone knows uh, MDH masala. Yes, I believe everyone is familiar with MDH masala. Yes or no? I mean, like you can just write one guy no. Maybe I will take embarrassment <laughs> that someone is not family with MDH masala. Okay. So I believe everyone uses masalas, these ready-made masala at their home. Someone who is uh, not using them. Anyone who is not using uh, market masalas at their home. Anyone who's using homemade masalas? Or shall I assume that every one of us, they are using ready-made masala from the market? Not necessarily MDH, Everest, Suhana. There are so many brands available these days. So all of us are using uh, ready-made masala. Yes or no? Can I have one answer? Wow, Rakshit, thank you. Homemade. So that's really awesome, dear. In the, today's time, it's uh, really, uh, if I come to your place, maybe I can enjoy your home food. Something because I'm also a cook at home. So I really enjoy and appreciate someone who takes so much effort for a specific taste in their dishes. So, but most of us, they are using ready-made masala. I believe yes, right? So, yeah. We know this guy, right? He's the brand ambassador of his own products. And uh, Dharmpal Gulati sahab, uh, Dharmpal sahab. And uh, he must have envisioned in early days that you know, in coming time, the ladies will have, you know, so less time in their kitchen that they won't be able to uh, get time to make their own masalas. So why don't I make masalas for all of these ladies, right? So he got the idea probably. I'm just kidding, but definitely something, uh, something similar you must have thought. So he started making all the masala ranges, something which is readily available. So let's check, look at the properties of these uh, any product okay so when we talk about the pro property of any product what do we identify them what are the properties they are good they are cost effective right okay and they are readily available off the shelf they are tried and tested okay they are validated and uh, they above all they save my time right they save my time so that is why we use all those masalas at our home okay quality yes quality is also definitely quality is consistent repetitive right so this is why we use masalas okay so that is one okay now tell me one thing when i buy uh when I buy anything like this, uh, 
sambar masala now tell me is this the end product this sambar masala is this an end product that i just mix water into it and i just it will become a sambar no definitely not this is not the end product it will help me to make my end product which is a sambar okay we will just bring taste to my sambar nothing else the ingredients of the sambar are mine they are mine they are my design that i'll put put a drumstick i'll put some curry leaves some hing or some i'm like uh some vegetables into it sambar that's it okay for example some guy do not use a drumstick right so this is it is his way of making the sambar but then sambar masala this product will bring a taste to my product okay so actually this is definitely and the mba sambar masala is an intellectual property of someone else i am only the user of it okay this product is intellectual property of someone else so that is why these such kind of products are called intellectual property products okay which you can make use in your product to design anything of your stuff they will help you to design your product they are not product in itself the end product they are not the end product in itself okay they cannot be used instead of sambar right they are used to make the sambar i believe i'm i'm, I'm like i've taken a uh, relatively correlative example i believe i'm not trying to confuse you guys and uh, i'm just trying to make a point understand okay and remember it is not like this that my 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 family or any of the people who are working in my kitchen my mom my my sister or my wife or anyone working in my kitchen they do not know how to make a sambar masala they know it they know it how to make it but it is only the time constraint because of which i'm using it okay because making a sambar masala require a lot of efforts you have to gather the best quality of raw uh, spices from the different places you have to dry them you have to roast them you have to grind them you have to filter them you have to mix them in a proper proportion then you have to validate them that they are trying to give the same aroma or not okay or same taste or not if something up and down is there you have to add a balance spices to it so that they give the best treatment so it's a to totally and very time consuming process and i skip all that design time consuming process of the design by just purchasing this off the shelf product right that's it it is not like this i don't know what is inside this mujhe sab maloom hai i know everything i know that what is the ingredients of this sambar masala but i'm not interested in designing my own right just to save time because remember when guest comes at your home or when you try to publish your cooking skill it is not the sambar masala you serve it right you don't serve the sambar masala you serve the sambar that is your product you serve the pav bhaji right this is where is the pav bhaji yeah you serve the pav bhaji you don't serve the pav bhaji masala to your guest that is the difference okay so pav bhaji is your end product and this guy will help you to make a product better in the least time okay so this is called an intellectual property core okay this is called an intellectual property core wow that what that was long i believe not too long to bore you guys <laughs> okay so in early 90s same thing happened over here the many people started predicting are not predicting they knew that in the coming times the number of transistors will go so high that it won't be possible for any company to design the entire product by their own from scratch so they started making you know some modules some modules of the products for example uh, for example you are designing an a microprocessor for of your own okay so people started making interrupt controller memory controllers io controllers timers they designing this, all this ke sir aap processor banaiye you make your logical processor i give you a timer why you are designing a timer why you are wasting time i give you a timer okay you just connect with your peripherals that's it 
and you give him the configuration file, that's it, it'll start working. You don't need to design the timer from the scratch. Okay, you want to make an interrupt controller? I give you the interrupt controller. You use in your processor. Why you are designing from scratch? Okay, so the people started this product, sub modules, which can be used in the main end product. And these modules were called as intellectual property cores. They are intellectual property of someone else. You cannot, you know, put a copyright on that. Someone else is copyrighted on that product. He has just allowed you to use it, okay, on license basis. That, okay, you can use one time, two times, three times, whatever. That's it. So, a lot of companies flourished in early 90s who were only designing IP cores. They were not making the end products. They were not making end products. They were making some modules for the end product making companies. Okay. And today also, there are a lot of companies in Bangalore, especially, there are a lot of companies who are working IP core design. Okay, one of my ex uh, engineers, they are working in some companies who are only uh, selling IP cores. Okay, so USB IP cores, Ethernet IP cores, Wi Fi IP cores, all that stuff, they are, they are making it. But then in the uh, early 2000, uh, it was the, the uh, software design. Okay, many, as the number of transistors increased, so it was very complex to handle the projects. So they were especially EDA tools made and designed to handle such complex uh, designs. Okay, and uh, there are many software companies who started making these only softwares for EDA, EDA tools so like Cadence, Synopsys. They all flourished in early nineties, and because that was the era in which they were heavily used and utilized. And these days, it is more about layout design, layout optimization techniques. These are more popular and inherently used because today the design is so complex that layout optimization becomes uh, has become bottleneck. Okay, so handling of the layout is much more important today as compared to previous times because today having a delay of one nanosecond extra can kill the design. Okay. You can have 100 transistors extra. There is no problem because there are abundance of transistors available. You can use 100, you use 200 transistors, no problem. But reduce the delay, reduce the power. That is how the concern of the designers have changed. So that is how uh, everyone is working in the layout more of it rather than logic part. Because in logic today, the number of transistors are so abundantly available. Then today it's more of system design. That is SOC. You must have heard of it, system on chip. When everything comes in a single chip, then you can define as a SOC or system on chip. And uh, most of the product what we use today in our gadgets, etc., they are all SOC design. Okay. So most of the companies in Bangalore, they are working in SOC design. So you will find the good opportunities over there at their places. Okay. So next part is about designing SX. Uh, I believe we, we can start this tomorrow. and designing part also by tomorrow so that uh, I, I'm, a, I'm not sure until what time I've been allowed to speak it was was it 5 or 5 30 does someone has the schedule I, I'm sorry I have not seen the entire why is someone family with till what time I'm allowed to continue just a second I'll just see the notes in the meanwhile if someone knows then we can, oh, 5 30, great. You guys are family. Okay. So I think we can, if I just uh, pace up a little bit, I can cover the AC part. Okay. Uh, ASICs, you are guys family with ASIC application specific integrated circuits. I believe if most of you are, if you have covered VLSI, maybe you must have heard of it. That's not, okay. Okay, let's put an introduction. So any IC which is specifically designed up for a purpose, then that is called as ASIC. That is, it is specifically designed for an application. That's why ASIC, application specific integrated circuit. Okay, so generally they are not software programmable. Okay, they are generally fixed for a particular purpose only. Okay, and like products like DRAM, SRAM, 74 series, generally they are not called as AC because they, they are designed in a generic manner that anyone can use it, anyone. Okay, 
So that's how it is. So examples like chipset MPCs, MPEG decoders, encoders, DSP function ICs, they are all ASIC because they had been dedicatedly designed for a particular purpose. Okay, baseband processor, modems, etc. So the question comes up that why someone would like to make an ASIC for himself? Okay, why is any of the product would require an ASIC to be made? Okay, so generally these are the reasons. Either there would be a design requirement, it could be design requirement, or it can be technology requirement or technology driven, or it can be market driven. It depends on that. Okay. So, so uh, it is about making any product. Okay. ASIC is also in product finally at the end of the day. As I'm saying that ASIC is also in product and these points are also the thought process on designing any product. They are common. There is nothing to get it in it. Okay. So it can be if someone wants to make an essay, it can be based on design requirement. It might be because that uh, someone requires an IC which uh, can just detect someone's voice and uh, maybe turn on and off any relay or some function. Now it is possible that such IC is not available in the market. It is not completely available, not at all. Okay. And there is my requirement. I'm working on some project, some project idea or a product idea in which I have to use uh, and I see in which there would be a microphone amplifier. It can detect a voice from any direction and it can turn on and off and relay. That's it. So I can just come in the room and I say, uh, turn tube light on. That's it. And it will turn on the tube light. Or I can say, turn on the fan. It will turn on the fan. That's it. And no internet required, nothing. It will be just locally processed. So such product is not available. So I have to fabricate that product. Not no chance at all. So in that case, you have to make your own IC. The other way around is technology driven. Okay. That means you're designing any product or a project in which the, the logic is so complex that is not at all possible to use any existing product and make your uh, project feasible. So in that case, you have to make an essay. It is also possible that you require better performance than what you are using any ready of the shelf ICs. Okay, I require a microprocessor which should run at two gigahertz, but whatever the processor I am having in the market, they work at the max 1.2 gigahertz. So I have to fabricate my own IC then, in which I have to optimize the speed and go to my desired target because it's possible that I have to sample something and two gigahertz of clock is my utmost priority to use. It is also possible that uh, I have a very high density product design. So in that case, I have to fabricate my own IC. Or in case of low power consumption, that I'm designing such a product in which a very, very low power design requirement is there. For example, any uh, wristband or any uh, Bluetooth based uh, gadgets in that very, very low power consumption requirements are there. So in that case, I have to go for my own fabrication of IC in which I can control the power and keep the power consumption under my desired levels. Then the reason behind of going your own IC can be also market driven. You want a very shorter time to market because if you delay your project development, definitely it will impact on your budgets of the project. Or you might want it cheaper with the competition. You want to just copy your competitor's product or maybe you are trying to protect from your competitor by making it cheaper. So in that case, you can go for making your own IC. That will be much more cheaper as compared to using off the shelf products, definitely. Okay. So ASICs are also available in flavors, uh, right side strawberry flavor, left side vanilla flavor. Okay, the top is the butterscotch and uh, quite interesting, quite interesting. Let's take some example. You guys like pizza? Pizza, pizza, you guys like pizza? Yes, no, anyone? It's a good answer. 
good question you like that pizza no mm. that's strange no one likes it no yes no no good rafael niranjan what happened you don't like pizza who there are two people who don't like pizza that's amazing <laughs> that's great to see that someone don't like pizza I love pizza, but I avoid it. It's 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 it increasing weight. It increases weight. You have one pizza in night, and definitely you're one kg over next day. <laughs> okay, I try to avoid it, but I love it. I love it. Okay, well, talking about the pizza, then they are also like basic, very similar. They are also round round. Okay, then you put something into it. Same logic. <laughs> Okay. Uh, okay. Let's 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 talk about non-programmable ASIC. Okay, non-programmable side. Okay, and uh, it comes like this. Okay, this one full custom, full custom ASIC, full custom pizza. First of all, we talk pizza about. Okay, when you say pizza, full custom pizza. Examples. Pizza, Domino's. Why they are so popular? Why they are so popular? Right? Because they make everything up by their own hands. I mean, everything it's their own custom. They make their own cheese, right? Their vegetables they come from highest highest selective vendors. even they have farms of their own to manufacture all tomatoes and all jalapenos all that ingredients toppings they put they have selective farms worldwide from there they pick up their ingredients right they make their own uh, spices they make their own dough right they make their own their sausages everything they make their own okay why For only one reason, taste. Taste, right? It's only because of the for the taste. This is how they win the competition. This is how they will. This is the only way they will win the competition, right? And it's the same is with the ASIC. The same logic goes with the ASIC. You want cheaper, faster, low power. Okay, complexity to be handled. These are very constrained. I mean, very tight budget. Every corner you want to cover. You want to be cheaper. You want to be faster. You want to be very low power. And you, there is a very long, complex project you have. So what do you do? You design everything by your own hand, right from scratch. You don't miss a single loophole where you waste anything. You don't want to miss any corner. You try to cover each and everything. in that case it is called as full custom ic full custom asic okay so that is like designing your own pizza right from scratch you don't use anything off the shelf nothing from the market everything raw you grow everything your ingredients you grow it you grow your vegetables you grow i mean you make your own pizzas uh, dough you make your own spices everything so that you want that every distinct taste across each and every each and every uh, outlet worldwide you taste a pizza right in pune you taste a pizza in bangalore you taste in calcutta you taste in london you will find similar taste you find a similar taste and that is because everything by own nothing local everything by own right so this is how it is this is how it is that is a full custom right that is a full custom design okay then you have a standard cell design second asic what can that be standard cell hmm? no uh, let's take some pizza example maybe again okay let's take a pizza example uh 
Uh, okay. In terms of PISA example, really, uh, okay. Uh, if you make PISA at your home, how you do it? I'm sure many of you must have made PISA somewhere in your life at home. So what do you do? You get PISA base, right? Then what? You get cheese. You get PISA cheese. Then you get vegetables, right? You get the sauce also. Okay, you bring from the market. Okay, you put it a double layer of sauce, then a cheese, then a vegetable topping, then another cheese topping, then another vegetable topping, then cheese on top of it. So you see, it's it's your product, right? But then you use the standard cells available in the market. You have used standard cells from the market, okay? So it is a custom design, definitely, okay? But not a full custom. You have used someone else pizza base, okay? So that's what you do in the silicon. You take one block from someone else, one block from someone else, one block from someone else, and these are all standard cells available. All standard cells available, okay? You just bring them up, okay? You just make the connections toward each other, okay? And you fabricate it, that's it. So yes, it will be low power, it will be high performing, but not of the top results, definitely. It's one of the second best results you can get, but then you're happy because at least it will be cheaper because you can go in the volume productions. You're not using off the shelf because even this pizza would be tasting better because this will be as per your requirement. This pizza would be as per your requirement. You want some special topping on it or some special spices on it. That's what you can do. So, that will be in, in, in all, it will be a good pizza, right? So this is it, okay? So this is called as standard cell design, okay? Then you have the mass grid array, in which this is little different, in which what is there, it is like more or less like subway, <laughs> in which you just, uh, uh, you have an IC in which already the gates are fabricated. Already the gates are fabricated. Some standard gates are fabricated like multiplexer or the NAND gates and some processor blocks, etc. And you just tell the fabricator that this is how the interconnection I want. Okay. So you just give him the mask files. That's it. That these are the interconnection of the gate logic I wish to make. And he will fabricate the connections for you and give it to you. So in this case, there are no standard cells, but then this is one of the third best logic you can have. Okay. So these are like the ways of making the uh, ASICs for you. And there are many companies in the on all the worldwide who fabricate chips for you on the sample quantity or also on the bulk quantity based on your purchase requirement. Then another part of the branches like programmable ASIC, in which also you get two, three flavors like CPLD, FPGA, SPAL, PLA. Uh, I believe your family with PAL logic, programmable error logic. You guys, I just open my chat box. Now, are you guys familiar with PAL logic, programmable error logic? No, yes. No. Okay. Then, uh, can I expect that you guys are familiar with CPLD and FPJ? Have you covered the CPLD FPGA in your curriculum till now? Because I've been told that in some places it is done, some places it is not. No? FPGA is covered, okay. Then, how PAL was made? PAL, 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 I expect that it is being taught. Okay, come on. A programmable array logic commonly known as PAL. This was first, one of the first programmable ICs made, okay? One of the first, first programmable ICs made. What it had, like, it has array of AND gates in which you can just program these connections, okay? You can program these connections, okay? And then you can OR them. So here you have product of the inputs, and this is, 
sum of products. This is what you can have. Okay. So in early days, these were used to solve Boolean expressions. All the Boolean ex expressions were solved using this pair logic. So only the user has to give him the programming file in which these connections of the AND gates to the input A, A bar, B, B bar, they were given. Okay. And uh, these were discarded, although it's still in use today. PAL are still used because they are very cheap to use, very cheap. As compared to C build, they just cost 50, 60, 100 rupees. As compared to C build, it's a thousand plus. So they are very costly in bulk. But replaced by FPGA technology, which are very cost efficient these days, if some complex logic has to be downloaded into them. Okay. So let's look around. I think I have a slide further on it. So this is what we talked about. Uh, full custom ASICs, they are designed for very high performance, speed, power, and cost. Okay. So all of the modules, every transistors, they are laid down by hand. So that means that that's why they, it makes it more complex. Okay. So anywhere anyone has an analog portion of the design, then they go for a full custom design. Okay. And generally, full custom is used for high end processors, your mobile chipset processor, because they go in volumes. So they don't want to leave anything in uncovered. And that's why they get good returns in terms of cost. Okay. Then other way are these uh, standard cell and semi-custom SX. So these are like uh, mass grid arrays and standard cell SX in which some, some custom blocks are readily taken by the designers and they are just fabricated together. And there you go. The only you control you have their connection and the fabrication technology. You don't have any control in the blocks you are using it, okay? But then the design timers are very less and the cost can be cut down too heavily. Then you have Primal ASIC. I believe this is a part of your course in which you use FPG and CPLD, which they can be programmed for any kind of digital logic function. And they also have came a long way since 80s. Uh, Vinayji. Uh, yes, sorry, sir. excuse me. I think this needs a little bit elaboration. Uh, can yes. we take up tomorrow this? Yes, yes, yes. Definitely, because this is, I think, my last slide. Uh, the design flow I will cover tomorrow. No, you need to cover, no, difficult. this you need to cover a, a second time again tomorrow also. Yes, yes, yes. No because this is required, I know, a lot of stuff, a little bit more, because last time also it has happened, same thing. Students yes. could not understand immediately, so they asked again. So better to take it tomorrow so that you know, yes, we can elaborate. Right. I, will, I will start that, no problem. Okay, this is the last thing. Okay. Yes, I mean this is just design flow. And, okay. Uh, uh, you just give give them tomorrow. a brief in, uh, give brief information. So tomorrow we can cover it again. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes, we can carry on. Yes, yeah, students. So the question comes up now that okay, what are the design steps in making the ASIC? That okay, what are the different modules like? Uh, so there are only three stages like front end design, back end design, and the foundry design. So in every stages, there are some steps which are followed in making the product ready. So one of, okay. So in, in this case, I just open this up. So this is called as front end part. Okay. This is called as front end design part. Then that is the back end part and there's a foundry part. Okay. So these are different steps. For example, the design entry in which you design. I mean, I, I just introduced this flowchart, and we will. Don't worry, we will uh, go in details tomorrow. Okay, because uh, it will require a lot of explanation on different stages, and the time will go against us. Okay. So, in this case, you just do the design entry that log of BHL file, which is converted to an gate level netlist. That is, you synthesize. Okay, to some other Netlist format in which the computers can understand. Once that is done, you do the timing analysis that you identify that at what frequency the design will work. And once that is done, you can go for a pre layout simulation in which you verify that will the design will work at a given frequency or not. Once that is verified, you just partition the entire design in different modules that okay, this is my Wi Fi part, this is my analog part, this is my digital part. Okay. So you just differentiate all the modules, then you give it to the backend designers. Okay. So now this is the task is over where 
the entire thing comes down to floor planning that you just make a judgment that where and how the entire modules will fit in the given uh, plot area or the floor area once that is being done he just converts to a layout designs and go for the place and routing where actually all the transfers are placed out and the routing is done once that part is over you go for some analysis like various kind of analysis okay and when everything comes through everything comes okay then you can pass the file to the foundry where he go for the fabrication uh, process okay so tomorrow i will go in detail with some examples of real life and understand stage by stage that why and how all these blocks are important and what do they signify and uh, what kind of engineers play roles in different stages of life because uh, there are many jobs available at every block okay. so that's fantastic okay so tomorrow we will cover that definitely uh, students you know most of the time see you will have uh, these things uh, you know studied at your college in you know, a four semester and as well as seven semester in the four semester you will be covering you know xilinx and as well as you know vhdl or verilog programming mm -hmm. but uh, you know when you come to seven semester almost you know you will forget it <laughs> okay so not to don't forget it anything you know because you need to uh, map it actually like what is programmable what is asic okay again <clears throat> in asic actually as he explained you know two types of programmable and uh, uh, you know it is a foundry uh, type of uh, devices so uh, you need to when you the you know, when you when you go to interview also even 90% of the students have not answered till date okay they'll forget it so better you now you just uh, go through this and you map it so that you know you can be able to answer it uh, very well okay and uh, tomorrow definitely you will vinay sharma will explain actually what are the different stages where you can uh, get into the expertise on uh, learning and as well as getting into the job so uh, you can practice it very well so wherever you think actually you can uh, make it your own skills so you can be in uh, that field okay so this is all you know even in your college also uh, this vlsl lab cannot be uh, told like this because <laughs> so you will have a blue book it is already it is uh, derived everything and you know you will verify it that's all okay what you need to know is a learning starting from your uh, schematic or layout whatever it is okay so up to uh, you know fab actually you need to learn the whole process so i think vinay will uh, because of his expert experience and expertise he can uh, give uh, full uh, details so don't miss your classes uh, daily be on time Five minutes early, so that we can start in time. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank so you, Anish. Shelly, this is the end for the day, and yeah. definitely we will catch up tomorrow at the same time, three yeah. thirty, right? Yeah, thank you. Okay, sir, Shelly. Uh, I see. Okay, I want to give one more information. See, yes, classes sir. will be on alternate days. So today is Wednesday. Next class will be on Friday. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Not on Thursday. It will be on Friday, the twenty-first. Okay. That's correct. Yeah. No thank problem, you. sir. Great. Okay. Thank you.